This time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions, we want to look at electrical wiring connections. So I've got a pile of junk here on the table in front of me. Um, I've just got some random offcuts of wire and a heap of different pliers and different types of um, connectors and soldering irons. So what I'd like to do first of all is just have a quick chat about what is a, a need to have, what is a nice to have. Now in terms of need to have, um, basically all you really need to join uh, a couple of wires together. Uh, in the field, for example, if you're on a breakdown, um, you, you know I've gone so far as to strip the wires with my teeth and twist them together and then just sort of keep them out of the way so they don't get hurt and get myself home. Uh, but if you're doing it, doing it properly in your, in your shed at home, uh, you are, it, it is nice to have a couple of uh, decent tools. The first, the first one you can get is these sort of cheapo um, crimping come stripping tools. And they usually have uh, different size wire strippers in them and different crimping. Uh, on the end, they're colour coded as well. And they're not too bad, they're a bit flimsy, they tend to twist. You want to get a good solid set. Uh, this pair here I used for many, many years, and I found that this, this pair were particularly good, and they had slightly bigger terminal uh, crimps on there. Good wire strippers, um, but the, like, the handles have all split and they're a bit rough and they are a bit rough and ready if I'm honest. So why, for wire stripping you can just use uh, a pair of pliers. Now these crescent pliers uh, are very popular with electricians. They don't actually close down tight in the jaw. They've got a nice sharp stripper in them and they even have a, um, a crimping a crimping part on the back of them. Uh, so you can sort of just you know, very lightly pinch and then pull the wire through. Now what you want to try and avoid though when you're doing that is breaking any of the strands off because um, that will increase the resistance across that joint or that part of the wire and it can get hot. So um, the other type of stripper that I use all the time is the automatic ones. Uh, these are brilliant and they this particular brand, uh, these are Vice Grip, I don't know what they are really, but they also have a few crimps on them and they have a stop so that you can make sure that your joint is the same every time. You just, they just strip like that. Um, so when it comes to must-haves, I mean, like I said, I've used my teeth, I wouldn't recommend that, but uh, you can also, if you're very careful, just use a normal pair of pliers to, to strip the wire. Now, when it comes to when it comes to actually joining the wires together, there's there's obviously uh, a plethora of different bits and pieces out there on the market. If you're making a connection with multiple points, you can purchase these these uh, connector kits, and they have a non-insulated terminal in them that you crimp onto the wire and then plug into the terminal block, and then you use it like an automotive uh, terminal. I've got a couple of different types of um, kits here. This is an insulated kit. This is a non-insulated kit. Now this non-insulated terminal kit I found really good. I've bought a couple of these but they sadly, super cheap auto, don't actually sell these anymore I don't think. Um, and I find, I find them hard to find online but um, I'm sure you can buy the individual components like spade connectors for example but yeah, trying to find the right one online, uh, like a kit like this online is, I've has proven to be very difficult. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at these. They they come without any insulation. However, they do come with um, a, a variety of different silicone uh, covers. So if you were going to fit one of these, you'd slide the silicone sleeve over the wire, like so, and then you would fit your connector. Now I've over trimmed this wire, so I'll just cut that back a bit.
Now there's two there's two areas of crimp on here. One is to actually hold the insula insulation and make the joint rigid, and the other one is to hold the the wire itself. Now this these are a bit big for this size wire, but just for the purpose of demonstration, they actually take a different type of crimping plier. Uh, you can see they've got uh, a variety of different uh, profiles in there, and the idea is that you find the right profile for what you're doing and you squash him down like so so that joint is very solid and offers uh, it offers insulated protection through the silicon uh, the silicon sleeve so that's the non-insulated terminals. Then we have the uh, the ever popular insulated terminals. Now these types of kits come with a variety of ones of which you will use a lot of some and none of any of others. Um, they have ring terminals, they have what we refer to over here in Australia as scotch clips. So these uh, you put two wires in and you crush them down. I don't like those. Uh, bullet connectors and straight straight terminals uh, straight terminal connectors and you've got um, male and female spade connectors that obviously slide together so as I mentioned you can use those uh, older cheaper type oh sorry they're not old they're, they still sell them today you can use these types of, of, of crimps to, to squash them down. But the joint is only as good as, as you know you make it. You can take a bit of the guesswork out of it by using a ratcheting type one like these. So these have got a profile in them and they won't over crimp. So the way they work is that you just simply pop, pop the wire down in there you then put the the ratcheting tool over on the right um, the right section you know it's the right section because it's color coded and that's it squashed down done jobs done good healthy crimp um, that would be my preferred method for fitting those types of terminals so then of course that leaves the solder joint um, i find that because i get i'm getting old <laughs> And I get the shakes and my eyes aren't the greatest. I, I need to have uh, a pair of these third pair of hands. Um, now I've got a piece of wire here that I've prepared earlier. You can, there's different ways that you can join them. So, I mean, you can just cross them over and screw them up like so. But that's, that's a rough way of doing it and you end up with this poke out piece in the in the wiring loom um, the there is a way that you can you can just sort of gently separate the wires and then push them together give them a bit of a twist and you've got a fairly nice lay flat joint like so or the other method is that and the one that I tend to use is I, I tighten up the strands cross them over in the middle and then wind them flat against each other like so and um, for a little bit of added added security and to get rid of some of the sharper pieces you can just profile it with a pair of pliers you need to I need to pop it into the uh, into the third hand because like I said I shake and shimmy now different types of solder uh, this is a lead based solder and they've got a ros core uh, resin flux inside them uh, so you don't need to put a separate flux on who's that So rudely interrupted. 
We've had everyone today. We've had charity bloody mobs and we've had... Yeah. Right. I was going to go through a soldering exercise and I'm standing here looking at it thinking, yep, I've buggered that up. So um, one of the things, of course, that you want to do is make sure that the joint is um, going to be electrically isolated. So we need to pop on a little bit of heat shrink. Um, now, the way heat shrink works is that any plastics that shrink, you're actually returning them back. They have a memory and they start at that at a smaller size and then they, uh, when they're manufacturing the, the heat shrink or whatever it is, they, um, they actually expand it and then when you heat it, you return it back to its uh, natural state. Right, now, soldering irons. Now, there's a couple of different types. I've got a couple of different ones here. This one's a butane soldering iron, and it's actually very good. It gets nice and hot. It's got an adjustable um, temperature on the bottom here. It's out of gas at the moment, but you know, they come with a little lighter on the end, and you just light this, this uh, section here, and it heats up, and they're good, nice and portable. Uh, I like that. Um, but for working at home, if you've got the... You know, we've got power, uh, the old um, the old hot soldering iron, electric soldering irons to go. You need to have the solder on the on the tip. It needs to be clean, and the and you can tin it with a, a wet sponge. Now we want to try and get, make sure it's up to temp. Yep, we want to try and get uh, the solder in there pretty quick. So you want the heat in there fast. And you just want to let it uh, soak through, like so. Just give it a flick on the ground, give it a wipe, and pop it back in its recept. Put the poker back in the poking receptacle. Now, so we, what we've got there is a nice hot, solid hot solder joint. Um, you can see that we haven't uh, affected the the insulation on the end either. I've seen people do that where they just sit there and heat and heat and heat and the heat transfers out into the wire up inside the insulation. The insulation melts and the plastic can actually go down in, in between the strands of uh, copper wire and um, cause a problem with that joint, cause a high temperature in that joint because of resistance. So uh, if you see people doing that, just uh, that that's not the best way to do it. The other thing you don't want to be doing is sitting there putting the, the solder onto the top, dropping it on top. You you want and trying to heat it from the top. Use gravity, bit of, get the temperature into the copper fairly quickly. You gotta have a nice tin soldering iron. If it's not clean and it's not tinned and it's not shiny, it's uh, going to give you problems with the heat, not only the heat transfer, uh, also getting the solder to run through the wire because it sort of draws it through and um, um, so when if I, if I left this sitting here hot and just let it cook, that would all go black. So it's oxidising. It actually works like an ins, like an insulator, and it won't get the, allow the uh, the temperature to get into the wire properly. And when it does, it doesn't pull the solder down. All it does is melt everything around it. So yes, keep it clean. Uh, so now that leaves our heat sink joint. Our, our heat sink joint. Now, if we want to make sure that this was uh, a waterproof joint in a waterproof application, you can use a bit of dielectric grease. All you do is just pop a bit onto the joint, get on there, slide the heat the heat shrink over, and you can either use like a cigarette lighter, or you can use one of these guys' uh, heat gun. And you want to make sure that the, the heat shrink you're using is uh, just big enough to fit over the wire. You see it'll push that grease out and that's fine. Again, don't go overcooking it with, uh, with either the flame or, or with that, um, the old um, heat gun because it'll It'll, uh, you'll melt the, the insulation again. So there you go, that's it. Uh, one other tip also, don't move this joint 
until it's cooled properly. So when it's sitting in uh, in here, just let it sit there until the sole is cool enough to be able to touch before you you, you pull the uh, the alligator clips out of the way. Well, right, yeah, I don't have I don't have a pair of these arms. I don't want to go buy them, or they don't sell them now in the local shop. Or I want to do the job now. This is another way you can do it. Just get a, a lid off a, a paint can or some sort of spray can, split it, and you can use that to hold your wire in place, thusly, and also it has the added advantage of catching the drips from the solder. So what's better, solder joint or crimp connection? Um, there's plenty of electricians that'll tell you that a crimp is better than a solder. Uh, the solder joint becomes, is very rigid obviously at the, at the joint. But as far as um, the electrical integrity of the, of the joint, a crimp connector and a solder connector, uh, solder joint are going to give you uh, equally as good a um, joint. What you don't want is high resistance because that'll cause heat at that joint and could potentially fail or uh, catch fire or something. The other thing, of course, you want to do is have it completely insulated. So, all right, the other, if you don't have any heat shrink, of course, the last resort is the old insulation tape uh, on the joint. You just um, put it on and wind it around, make sure it's tight, work your way up, up or down towards the uh, towards the joint across the joint and then and then you finish obviously um, you can break it or use a use a, a knife or a pair of scissors or whatever uh, and that'll get you out of trouble as well but obviously the heat shrink is uh, a much better option so there you go sold the joint uh, don't overcook it make sure that you don't do a cold, what they call a cold joint, by trying to drip the solder onto the top and run it into the wire. It doesn't work that way. You need to heat the wire. So you need to generate enough heat in the wire that it starts to melt the solder. Um, different types of soldering irons, different types of crimping pliers, different types of terminals. Happy days. Enjoy your wiring. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and I'll catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now.